Thanks for joining us. Detectives are piecing together what they're calling a targeted shooting in broad daylight. It happened yesterday around supper time in Markham. One man shot and killed in his driveway. Tyree Greed spent the day talking with neighbors who say crime in their neighborhood is getting worse. Police vehicles flooded the streets of this Markham neighborhood Saturday night. Evidence markers lining the sidewalk, a result of the city's latest murder. Police now identifying the victim as 44-year-old Parthipan Panchalingam. He was shot dead in his driveway. This is a shooting that occurred in broad daylight, which is pretty shocking in any of our communities. It happened at this home in the McCallum Road and 14th Avenue area just after 6.30 p.m. Sunday yellow tape homicide detectives and blood stains still remain on the driveway. Neighbors say their fear does as well. Many of them are home when it happened. Just heard like uh, some gunshots, uh, like I said, six or seven gunshots. And, um, um, and then we saw the police came here and it was pretty busy. I stepped there uh, almost very close to it. And I saw the body there on the floor. Well, I have a, like three grandkids here. We're a little scary now. Police say they're looking for one suspect who was wearing dark clothing at the time and took off in a white SUV. They believe the shooting wasn't random. We do want to ensure our citizens that they uh, are aware that this is a targeted incident. We are obviously looking into uh, his background and his relationship. We, he is known to police, and that's why we do think that this incident was targeted. While the incident is shocking, neighbors say the shooting adds to a list of crimes they've been tracking in the area. You know, a robbery or theft or, or just people just, you know, trying to uh, uh, go into other people's cars. Uh, you know, we've, we've, we've feel that we felt that in the last two years, there's, an, there's a very like, high uptick, uptick of, uh, of violence in the area. Last week, uh, this, uh, my neighbor got robbed. Robbed rob uh, last week, so there's a second time in a week. Officers say it's unknown if the shooting was a drive-by. We don't know if he walked up on foot. We don't know. Uh, that's, that's what we're investigating now. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward. Terry Greed, CBC News, Markham. Two people are dead after a crash in Northumberland. It happened just after midnight. Any uh, incidents of this nature is obviously, obviously a huge impact to the community as a whole. Uh, again, we can't stress enough that our, our thoughts are with the family and friends. Uh, as this is a tragic event where unfortunately two people have lost their lives as a result of the collision. Police say a 41-year-old man from Duro Dummer was pronounced dead on scene and a 32-year-old woman from Oshawa was taken to hospital where she too later died. County Road 25 was closed for more than 12 hours as police gathered evidence and cleared the roadway. Police are asking anyone who saw the crash or may have dash cam footage to contact OPP. Queen's Park is back in session Monday after a flurry of promises from the Ford government. As Nama Weingarten shows us, the chatter about a potential early election is only growing louder. After an unusually long summer break, some would say this return is long awaited, especially since Premier Doug Ford made an array of announcements and remarks since the last time all parties were together back in June. That's why today I'm announcing that our government is exploring the feasibility of a tunnel under the Highway 401. Along with the tunnel, the list includes legislation that could restrict where towns and cities build bike lanes and potentially sending all Ontarians $200 checks, an announcement that experts say is more geared towards an election campaign. It's not policy that drives this, it's politics that drives sending out a $200 check. The next official election date isn't until 2026, before it gave his party a December deadline to decide whether they want to run again, opening the possibility of an early election in 2025. The latest liaison poll shows the Conservatives have the strongest support. But according to another poll from this summer, calling an early election in particular might cause a dip. And back then we found, you know, this could actually lead them to have a minority government rather than a majority government. Well, I think some people have a sense of fairness. They think, you know, you, you got voted in for four years, you, you should finish that out. Meanwhile, other party members say that the focus of the government should be governing rather than eyeing the next election cycle. The reality is that our healthcare system, our housing, affordability are all in a state of crisis. They are going to be keen to distract away from that. Actually listen to and address 
the real concerns the people of Ontario have. Almost everything the Premier has proposed over the last few weeks is just fantasy land, fiscal nightmare. We reached out to the Conservative government to hear about their plans, but haven't heard back in time for broadcast. As for Monday, when these legislature doors open, the government is set to announce a bill aimed to ease congestion, including 24-hour-a-day construction and the controversial measure to restrict where bike lanes are built. All of that, as speculations of an early election, continue to swirl. Nama Weingarten, CBC News, Toronto. Well, ever since the province expanded beer and wine sales into convenience stores, craft brewers say they've been struggling to keep up. As Talia Ricci shows us, they've now launched a new campaign pushing the government to tackle alcohol taxes. Ontario craft brewers say the province has the highest craft beer taxes in Canada. Breweries have been holding out hope that some financial relief is around the corner, but many of the places that make craft beer say they're struggling to stay afloat and compete in the newly expanded market. For example, in comparison, a brewery the same size as Steam Whistle in Quebec pays a little more than $4 million less in tax every year, and it would be great for us to be able to have lower tax costs so that we can invest uh, and produce more jobs in Ontario and uh, provide better services to, to the new retailers that are just opening up. Last year, the provincial government announced a review of its alcohol taxes, but business owners are still waiting on the results. Now, brewers have started a new campaign with the hopes of speeding up the process. And this campaign is uh, save the local craft beer is to hit the, the nail on the head to keep that momentum going. Um, while breweries are closing across the province. Last month, the province announced the largest expansion of provincial alcohol sales since the end of Prohibition almost 100 years ago, with licensed convenience stores now able to sell beer and other alcoholic beverages. Craft breweries celebrate that, but say they also need the chance to keep up. Let's get the rates down. Let's uh, allow these brewers a chance to breathe and to invest and to take advantage of the new retail marketplace. In a statement, the Ministry of Finance says it's keeping costs down by freezing the beer tax increase, adding the province is conducting a review of alcohol taxes with the aim of ensuring value and competitiveness for consumers. However, it didn't say when that review would be complete. The craft beer industry in Ontario is ready to explode and uh, we can really see 50% to 100% growth in the industry. We're vastly underdeveloped versus provinces like BC and Alberta, and the reason is simple. They've got an expanded retail system like we've just announced, and they also have far lower taxes. Local breweries say the longer it takes, the more of these breweries will be at risk of shutting their doors. And they say these spaces do a lot more than just sell craft beer. It's the gathering spot. It's a, a hub of economic activity. Um, for us up in Bracebridge and Muskoka, you know, we're one of the biggest employers in the Muskoka region. Um, you know, everything everybody sees Muskoka in the summer and how busy it is there, but there's there's often employment challenges year round. So we also provide great year round jobs. So we give back so much to communities, and the community gives back so much to us, and they're vital pieces of uh, community. So I think the more we can grow, the more communities uh, will evolve. Talia Ricci, CBC News, Toronto. More than 500 kinds of frozen waffles sold in Canada and the U.S. are being recalled over fears of listeria. Treehouse Foods issued the voluntary recall after testing at one of its manufacturing facilities. The affected brands include Walmart's Great Value, as well as No Name, Compliments and Selection. So far, there have been no confirmed reports of illness linked to the recalled items. Toronto school buses are supposed to be back to normal Monday, according to the Toronto Student Transport Group. More than 100 buses were cancelled on Thursday and Friday. TO School Bus saying it was due to, quote, driver qualification issues at First Student Inc. They say they've now confirmed all driver issues have been addressed and all bus routes will be back in service. Thousands of runners from all over the world taking over the streets of Toronto for the Waterfront Marathon. For many, it brings months of tough training to the finish line. Here in the Canadian Championships, it's the ECS Toronto Waterfront Marathon, Natasha Wodak. Yeah, from Surrey, B.C., Natasha Wodak there winning her first national title, finishing in an impressive 2 hours and 27 minutes, 54 seconds. You can really feel the energy there from people cheering on the sidelines as Ethiopian runners took both the men's and women's overall titles. 
And some homegrown highlights to tell you about too. Leslie Sexton of Markham placed second in the Canadian standings, while Toronto's Rachel Hanna took the third spot on her home turf. Congratulations to everyone who took part. In these closing stages by Hopefully all the runners got to enjoy some pancakes and maybe some pasta after the big race. You know, you got a carb load, well earned, well deserved. And talk about a beautiful day for a marathon. Sophia joining us now for our first look at the forecast. Hey, Sophia. Shannon, yes, thank you. What a beautiful weekend. You really locked out for any of the outdoor events, including the big Toronto Waterfront Marathon. Just fantastic weather. What do we have going on here? We have this ridge of high pressure and warm air descends when you have a ridge of high pressure. And as that air descends and sinks down, it warms up even further. We have some beautiful downsloping winds that'll up your temperatures. We'll talk about that in the coming days. We also have an end to the warm weather, which we will discuss more in the long range. But until then, and your overnight temperatures overnight tonight are even warmer than what our daytime high should normally be this time of year. And when you have a, a firmly rooted lid on the pot, so to speak, it really keeps away the rain as well. So we'll talk about this stretch, uh, this dry period. It's quite a long rain void. We'll go through the numbers in a few minutes in the long range. But until then, let's take you through the next 24 to 36 hours. Monday morning, again, our temperatures are where the seasonal norm should normally be this time of year. And as we head to Monday afternoon, temperatures in the south are glorious plenty of sunshine mid 20s that's about 5 to 10 degrees above the seasonal average and about 10 to 15 degrees above your seasonal norms for those of you in parts of northern ontario the warmth continues monday evening tuesday is glorious as well enjoy it while you can because i'll tell you more in the long range the back half of this work week well it's more seasonal and a little cooler than the next few days enjoy it while you can okay we'll chat soon <laughs> Taking to the stage at Mount Lassman Square this weekend for North York Diwali Fest, celebrating the Festival of Lights. The two-day event featured a variety of vendors, some delicious Indian dishes and world cuisine, and of course, live music and dance performances. Organizers say it's important for them to come together this way in North York as an opportunity to share and celebrate diversity. We want to bring the positivity and love between all the communities. That's why we are doing something here, which, uh, which, which is open for all the communities to come here. And as you see, a lot of diverse people are here. It's not only Hindus or Indians or whoever. Everybody is here. They're Asians, they're Middle East, everybody is here. We are learning a lot of things from them, and they're learning our culture. So that, that's why it's, it's like a positivity is there, like people togetherness. Organizers say this is the second year they put together this event in North York. This was one of a few different gatherings celebrating the Hindu Festival of Lights across the province this weekend. And there is many more expected next weekend as this year Diwali falls on October 31st. 24 hours before BC's provincial election, everyone agreed it was too close to call. Well, 24 hours after, it still is. Neither the governing NDP nor conservative challenger have secured enough seats yet to form government. With 70, 47 seats needed for a majority, the NDP is leading or elected in 46, the conservatives in 45. 11 are too close for CBC News to project a winner. As it stands, two are bound for an official recount. Cuba's power grid collapsed twice more today, making four crashes since Friday. There have been false starts and brief hopes. The energy minister expects the system to be fully functional by Tuesday, but there have been localized blackouts for weeks, and he says people shouldn't expect dramatic improvement. But there is perhaps an even bigger worry, Hurricane Oscar. It's already made landfall on the northern coast, and forecasters say some places could face extreme danger. To the U.S., where the presidential hopefuls are in countdown mode, making stops in all the battleground states. As Karen Pauls shows us, the messages aren't changing, but they're being delivered with even more intensity. That's great. Thank you. Donald Trump swapped his suit jacket for a McDonald's apron, making fries and serving customers. This is fun. I could do this all day. 
in a photo op designed to tear down his opponent. He's accusing Kamala Harris of lying about working at the fast food chain during her college years, but offering no proof. Now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. Okay, she, she never worked here. Harris, meanwhile, was celebrating her 60th birthday at a Baptist church as she asked black Christian voters to support a campaign called Souls to the Polls. In this moment, our country is at a crossroads. And where we go from here is up to us. Her appeal to voters' morality in Georgia, a sharp contrast to Trump's vulgarity in Pennsylvania. At a rally in the hometown of Arnold Palmer Saturday, Trump made crude comments about the late golf legend. He took showers with the other pros. They came out of there and they said, oh my God, that's unbelievable. <laughs> and used offensive language to insult Harris. You're a shit vice president. Pennsylvania also the site of a million dollar giveaway from Trump supporter Elon Musk. Tonight's person is John Trey. The check going to a registered voter who signed a petition by his super PAC, part of an effort to get more people to register to vote in the state, drawing concern from Pennsylvania's governor. I think there are real questions with how he is spending money uh, in this race, how the dark money is flowing, uh, not just into Pennsylvania, but apparently now into the pockets of Pennsylvanians. Musk is promising another giveaway every day until the election, and that is now just two weeks away. Karen Pauls, CBC News, Washington. It has been a slow start, but fall colors are finally on full display across southern Ontario. This footage from our CBC News drone team showing a bird's eye view of the beautiful colors in the city of Barrie. It's been an unusually warm start to the season that kept those leaves green up until very recently. Some colder weather over the past couple of weeks helped speed up that transformation. Sophia is back with us after the break with your long range forecast. Stay with us. One very spooky Halloween walk in Whitby had a different kind of scare, almost being forced to close due to permit issues. But residents and the mayor stepped in to bring the fright back to Durham. Here, let's go in. Say hi, everyone. Say hi. Where are you guys? I can't hear you. Yeah. I started this project about four years ago, and it's just right in my heart. I wanted to do something for the community. I really love Halloween, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. Obviously, you can see people running. They enjoy it. People travel from all over. It was like a lot of back and forth with the city. Me and my husband kept going to the city, and they were put us to another person, to another person. They kept saying no, no, no about the permits because of the unseen road behind me. Then I finally did a farewell um, letter on Facebook saying, okay, I'll be closing Brawley Woods because I tried everything and my heart was broken. And so then I turned around and I posted it on Facebook and the community got really upset. I was completely heartbroken because me and my husband, we built Drawley Woods, as you can see, you went through it and you saw all the passion and the love and all the hard work we put into it. If it wasn't for the mayor of Whippy talking to the town, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now and all these people that are behind me wouldn't be enjoying Brawley Woods right now. If it wasn't for everyone coming out and helping me, it wouldn't be happening because of you guys. It means so much, all those, um, all the messages on Facebook from all of you guys. Like it was heartwarming reading everything and I didn't realize how much Brawley Woods meant to everyone. 
so glad they got that all sorted out. Not for the faint of heart, though. That place looks really scary, Sophia. I bet you, though, you'd be brave enough to do it. <laughs> well, I can promise you some unscary weather over the next 24 to 36 hours for any of the fun Halloween events you want to take up. Uh, but imagine, speaking of Halloween, imagine if the forecast for trick-or-treating night was like we have tonight. Our overnight lows should be about 5 degrees this time of year. We're going to be sitting at 14 into the overnight period. This would be glorious trick-or-treating weather if it holds up along with this dry stretch that we are having. No rain expected right through Tuesday across much of the province. In fact, we are within a stretch of seven days without a trace of precipitation. Seven, maybe six, depending on how things work out. Our longest streak so far this year was that 11-day dry stretch back in September. Many of you may remember that. Temperatures will be balmy over the next couple days as well. Mid-20s for Monday and Tuesday with plenty of sunshine. But yes, they are exceptionally warm temperatures, but not completely unheard of. Uh, in our climatology records, we've had 25 degree days on record all the way into the first and second weeks of November before. We've also had 20s all the way into the end of November and even the beginning of December. So not unheard of, but certainly welcome. The warmth will not last long, though. This cool trough of polar Arctic air moves in Tuesday into Wednesday. It's not going to be super cold. It's not even going to be a huge rain event, but it will bring us back down to seasonal. It's with this cold front that will bring some rain Tuesday overnight and some gusty conditions into the nickel belt. And then it's Wednesday morning when those gustier and breezier winds and some light showers move into the Georgian Bay shores and throughout your Wednesday around the GTA is when you may see some spotty showers creep up on you. More so a story for those of you in the parts of eastern Ontario and into the nation's capital region where you may actually see some moderate rainfall with that cold front that brings you back down to seasonal for the second half of this work week. You're not seeing a ton of rain in the GTA but you are seeing seasonal values and into next weekend not looking like a huge rain event so really some pretty nice weather for all the fun uh, Halloween events for all you ghouls and goblins and ample sunshine this upcoming work week Shannon hey we'll take it so many Halloween events being planned to enjoy thanks so much Sophia that's our show thanks for watching as we say goodbye we got to take you to another Halloween event some of Toronto's pod pals dressing up and putting on their best costumes along with their owners. There they are, Halloween puppy pageant, downtown young. How fun is that? Thanks so much. We'll see you again next weekend.